Excuse me, neighbor. There is something I want to ask you. What is it? Go on. Why do you always bring a man into your marital home any time your husband is not around? Don't you know you are endangering your husband's life? Not only that, you are bringing curses and evil spirits upon your life and that of your house. What is the meaning of that question? Is that why you stopped me? Ma Rover, who told you that I was sleeping with a man who was not my husband? Or you want to gossip? I saw with my eyes. Don't forget, we are neighbors. I always see Peter entering your house once your husband leaves for work. And I am asking you because I wanted you to know that what you are doing is evil in the sight of God and man. Paraventure, if you die in it, you will go to hell for eternity. Who told you that Peter entering my house whenever my husband was not around meant I was sleeping with him? Listen, if not because you were my friend, you wouldn't have liked my action. When did my private life become your concern? What is your business on how I choose to live my life? I know it is not my business, but it is God's business, because your life belongs to Him, and you know God hates sin, so fear God and the consequences of sin, so that your life will end well. Sin has no gain but only pain and destruction, and I know no one wants to be destroyed. There are a lot of evil forces attached to sex, which is why the Word of God says it must be for only married couples. So as a married man or woman, whenever you are sleeping with a person who is not your wife or husband, you are invoking a curse plus those evil spirits in your family, and any couple that are not faithful to each other don't progress and still end up in destruction. What do I mean? All of a sudden, the family will get scattered beyond repair, and the children will be the ones to suffer. That is what those evil spirits from sleeping around cause. And that is why I want you to stop it before it is too late. Learn to control yourself. Learn to be faithful to your partner. Learn to live your life for Christ alone. Beware. We are at the end of time. Hebrews 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Keep your advice to yourself, because what you are saying is not what I am doing. Excuse me. Gossiper. Instead of saying she is jealous, because no young man is coming for her, starts saying what no one asks her. After all, I am not the only one doing it, and I have not surrendered to Jesus, so the Bible verses are not for me. Dear, I want you to prepare vegetable soup today. That is what I want to eat when I come back from work. Okay, but you have to drop enough money so that I can make it rich. Besides, things are very expensive. Of course, I know that. I could have dropped enough so that you could also buy all those things you said you wanted, but things are not the way I expected them to be. Don't worry, things will get better. It's everywhere. Someone is on the door. Are you expecting anyone? No, I am not expecting anyone, but let me go and check. I will be back. Peter. Hey, baby. I have been waiting for you to call me. Why haven't you called? What are you doing here? Peter, my husband is still around. He has not left for work. But what is he still doing at home by now? Doesn't he want to go to work, or has he suddenly turned to a witch? Go back I will call you once he leaves the house. <clears throat> See Peter be going slow that you don't expose us. Okay, but don't keep me waiting. Look at her. Anytime her husband leaves the house, she will bring in another man. I just pray she doesn't waste that man's life. Men who mistakenly marry women whose legs don't stay in one place die before their time. I hope it is not the same with that good man. In fact, I think it is time I let her husband know what the wife was doing so that he would not die either by plot or disease. Dear, who is that? It was Mummy Henry. She said she was passing and decided to say hi. Alright, I will be going now. Take care of yourself. Meanwhile, I have dropped the money on the table. Use it well. You know things are difficult. No problem. Go well. Good morning, neighbor. Good morning. Are you going to work? Yes, I am already running late. Please, I want to see you for just five minutes. It is for your sake. Please meet me at the corner. All right. I hope there's no problem. See, your wife is cheating on you. Anytime you leave for work, she will bring a man into your house, 
and they will stay together until you are about to return. Then this man will leave. Are you serious? How can you say my wife is cheating on me? I trust her. She can't do something like that. If you think I am lying, branch somewhere, stay there for 15 minutes, then return. You will see with your eyes. I am telling you this so that you will be careful with your life. Excuse me. Oh no, I pray this is not true. I know what to do. I will do as the man said. Let me see if my wife can do this. What is keeping that man? Doesn't he want to leave today? Look at the way you are waiting for someone's wife as if she is yours. What do you gain from doing this? Don't you have a conscience? If she is your wife, would you like another man to be sleeping with her? Leviticus 18 verse 20 You shall not have intercourse with your neighbor's wife, to be defiled with her. Please mind your business. After all, I am not coming to your own wife, and I can never come to her. She is not my type. You can't even try it, because both of you will not be able to tell this story. Stop doing to someone what you wouldn't like another person to do to you. Leave people's wives alone and go and marry. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that man should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Matthew 7 verse 12. Be useful to yourself. Who told you I was not useful, or is it because I came to sit in your workshop? Stop deceiving yourself. There is no one who sows in hands with evil that is useful. If you think it is a lie, ask yourself what you have achieved ever since you were sleeping with people's wives, nothing, but curse upon yourself. That is why you never see anything wrong with evil doing. Proverbs 6 verse 32. The one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense. He who would destroy himself does it. Take your Bible verses to your fellow Christians. I am not one of them, and they don't have time for that now. You think you are free to commit sin as you like in the name of your refusal to repent. Hello baby. He is out. You can now come. Very good. I will come there right away. See, if you don't like what I am doing, suit yourself. I'm not the only one doing it. Go stop others too before coming to stop me. May God have mercy on you. And you too. What is my business with that? Why is he quoting the Bible to me? I have not repented, and I am not ready to repent now until I am satisfied with this world and its pleasure, just like those claiming to be Christians now after committing a lot of sin. <laughs> I just hope it's not true. How I wish I would be disappointed. I pray my heart is not broken. What is going on there? Oh no, my husband. What? I said, what is going on there? Dear is not what you think. We are just. Yes, it is not what you think. I was just. Oh no. Oh no. So it's true, my own wife. Yo! Husband please, it is not what you think. He came to check on you. Don't be disappointed. Yo! Yes, I, I, I came, and, and. So you have the guts to lie after sleeping with my own wife? Oh no, oh no, your head will roll on the ground today. I am sorry. Tamper justice with mercy. Oh no. oh no. So I am alive. I thought I was dead. Please help me hold that man. Let me pour my sorrow on him. I am not done with him. In fact, what am I doing? Where is that adulterous wife? I finally disgrace myself. How do I face this shame? God, thank you for saving me. I can't believe I escaped. Who is there? Oh my heart. I thought it was the man. But why did he come back? I thought he had left. I saw him leaving, and I made sure he had gone far before I rushed his wife. How come he came back? Now I remember. I think I know who told him. It must be their neighbor. He always looked at me whenever I was entering that house. I know it must be him, and I will deal with him for putting eyes on what does not concern him. After dealing with him, next time he will learn to mind his business. Whether it is his own wife I was coming after, he will tell me. Nonsense. I must teach him a lesson for making me walk around almost naked. Peter, why are you half naked? Guy, you will not understand. If I tell you where I escaped from, you will call me Peter. You are the man. I know Mr. Jude must have caught you with his wife. My man, you won't understand. I almost lost my life. That man was so mean. Why won't he be mean? I told you to leave married women alone. You are bringing a curse upon your head. And I told you I wouldn't because I am enjoying it and I am not done with the enjoyment. 
you are enjoying sin and wickedness against your fellow man. Don't you know it is a curse to be going after married people? Those who do that do not last and never succeed. Deuteronomy 22, verse 22. If a man is found lying with the wife of another man, both of them shall die, the man who lay with the woman, and the woman. So you shall purge the evil from Israel. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 to 10. Stop toying with sin because of Jesus' grace. If it were in the olden days you did that, you would be put to death. I am not the only one doing it. A lot of men are doing it, and nothing is happening to them, and nothing will happen to me. So please, I don't need this now. I want to go home and dress up. I have a club to attend. See you next time. Excuse me. Peter, stop doing evil because others are doing it. Grace is different. Repent and stay away from evil. Anything that is sweet kills. Moreover, you are going to stand alone on the day of judgment, and there is nothing like, let me finish my evil way before repenting. God cannot be mocked. As long as you know what you are doing is evil, you will pay for it. Stop deceiving yourself. Whether you repent before doing evil or not, you will give an account of it. I hear. Keep wasting your time, as long as I am concerned. I will enjoy myself until I am tired. Then I may decide to repent. I am not ready to start depriving myself so much in the name of pursuing a righteous life. At the end, people who live as they like, kill, and destroy will repent and still sit where those who have given up everything called sin from their youth are seated. That is not fair. If someone who committed a lot of atrocities will be given grace after all those evils, why should I start on time? Dear, I pray we reach on time. Oh no, look at that beautiful lady. Is that man his husband? How can that old man have that young lady as a wife? Oh no, I won't allow it. I must get that lady. What do I do now? How do I give her a sign without her husband noticing? Oh no. I won't allow this opportunity to pass me by. Let me go and put on my best dress before people like me take her before me. Hello, young man. I saw you running away from Mr. Paul. So what is your business there? Is that why you stopped me? I am sorry if that offends you, but I want you to know that you are destroying the temple of God when you destroy another. Sleeping with people's wives is a sin and wickedness, and I want you to repent so that you will not cry. Had I known at last. Says who? What have I done that is more than what others are doing? Am I the first to sleep with someone's wife? Even all these year pastors have done more than me before repenting. In fact, many of them have robbed, stolen, or even killed. Today, they are pastors. I haven't reached half of their sin. When I reach it, I will repent. For now, please leave me alone. Sir, just as our faces are different, our destinies, or missions, our lifespan, and our grace are different too. We are in this world for different reasons, with different times given to each and every one of us to accomplish our mission on earth. Some people have the grace to use 30 years to fulfill their destinies or accomplish their mission on earth. Some have the grace to use 20 years to accomplish their mission on earth. Vice versa. If this group of people who were destined to use 30 years to accomplish their mission on earth wasted 20 years of their time and still have 10 more years to go, will it be the same for those who have only 20 years to accomplish their mission on earth and wasted the whole 20 years? Those people that have 10 years of grace remaining might use those 10 years wisely and manage to escape God's wrath to come, and those that have only 20 years that wasted it because people with 30 years wasted their 20 years. How would they manage to escape God's wrath? Remember, their grace ended once it reached those 20 years, and the grace of those with 30 years still continues because they have another 10 years to go. Remember, once it reaches the time given to us, whether we fulfill our purpose on earth or not, we will be called to give an account. This is why you don't do evil because others are doing, or have done it. When you look at your palm, it is different from others. Use your own grace when you can because you do not know how long you were given to accomplish your mission on earth. Your grace on earth might not be like that of those pastors you know who were once sinners. Repent now that you can. Do you know why I will not accept that? 
it is because a lot of people repented after having committed a lot of atrocities, and God forgave them after all they did. So of what use is it for me to start now to live a holy life? At the end, people who are doing a lot of evil will now later repent, be forgiven, and be counted where those who started on time are. Is that not unfair? Who told you that? My uncle killed my father and a lot of people, maltreated my mother and her children, and later repented, and they called him leader after everything he did. That is what is hurting me the most. I hate Christianity a lot. Why will an evil person who has hurt a lot of people, sent so many to their early graves, and tied a lot of destinies, rendering a lot of people useless, have that grace to repent? It's very, very annoying. What happens to those souls he never allowed to accomplish their own mission? What happened to those people? He destroyed their destinies. But I just explained to you a while ago that no man can kill his fellow man if God does not allow it. Meaning, in any way a person dies, there must be a story behind the death, but the truth is that, that is the time of the person. I once told you that everyone has a different time to use. Nevertheless, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Galatians 6 verses 7 to 8. He repented, yes, but that would not stop God from giving him the punishment he required for all he did. Have you forgotten that, if you call all God's names without mentioning God of vengeance, you have not completed the name? When David sinned, God forgave him but still gave him the punishment he deserved. Any sin one commits against his fellow human, he must pay for it. That is God for you. And this is why a lot of Christians, after repenting, face so many challenges. Some of the challenges are not because we are Christians, but because of what we did to our fellow humans before repenting. There are sins we will commit, repent, and go free, not when it comes to killing, destroying a person's property or image, taking what belongs to another forcefully, sowing discord between brethren, separating marriages, or putting asunder in what God has joined together and later repent and believe we will not pay for it. It is a lie. As long as it is to do with our fellow human beings, we should prepare to pay for it with restitution. Why? It is because God loves everyone equally, so whenever we are destroying our fellow humans, we should bear in mind that we will pay for it with restitution. If you like, live in a church and pray from day to day, month to month, and year to year without resting, you must pay for it in a way you will not understand. Unless you reflect on yourself, you will not understand why you are going through those problems, and many have gone back to sin as a result of not understanding why they must go through those problems after repenting, and this is why we should be careful of the kind of life we live. Proverbs 6 verse 16 to 19. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. When you look at this verse in the Bible, you will notice that it has to do with sin against a fellow human. Whoever loves and commits those sins will pay for it. In Exodus 7, verse 3, God said to Moses, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt, and bring forth mine armies, and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. The question here is, why did God harden Pharaoh's heart not to let the children of Israel go, and still punish him after hardening his heart? He is God. Shouldn't he have softened Pharaoh's heart? so that he let the children of Israel go. Shouldn't he have revealed himself in a dream to Pharaoh and put fear in him? Why did he harden his heart and still punish him? Does God love punishing people? Is it only to prove that he is God? There are many ways he can do that, so why did he choose the punishment way? It is because Pharaoh and his people must pay for all they have done against the Israel. Don't be surprised. His name is God of Vengeance. When you look at all the punishment God gave to Pharaoh and his people, you will see that, it is double of what Pharaoh and his people did to the children of Israel. Be careful how you tremble upon people, because you must pay for it. There is nothing like, 
let me kill my fellow human, or destroy them under the umbrella that you have not repented, and later repent and walk out free. It is a lie because, whether you have repented before doing it or not, you already know it is evil, and that alone is enough to judge. Repentance is the ability to live without sin. It is not the ability to know what is sin and what is not. Everyone knows what sin is, whether repented of or not, because it is written in our hearts. Hebrews 8 verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds, and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. If you want to do good, you already know it is good. If you want to do bad, you already know it is bad, so harden your heart to do it. This is why everyone will face judgment, whether we repent or not, because the law of God is written in our hearts. There is nothing like, I did it when I had not repented. There is nothing like, I did not know it was a sin. The law of God is written in our hearts. So anything you are doing against your fellow, remember, it is God you are doing it to. Repent. Don't repent. You must pay. The only thing is that when you repent and face the restitution of what you have done, even if you die in the process, you may escape eternal punishment. We are all created in the image of God, whether you are black, green, yellow, or white. We are the image of God. If you destroy God's image, he will destroy you. Stop saying I don't want to repent, because a lot of people repent after committing a lot of evil against humanity and are forgiven. Although they are forgiven, the same measure they use on those people will be used on them. Now I know why my uncle has to face all that. My son, please help me. I am hungry. Sir, why is it that your children don't care about you? My son, I don't know what I did to them that made them turn their backs on me. None of them care to know if I am eating or not. It's okay, you have to go and come back. For now, I don't have anything. Is all right. <coughs> How his children abandoned him like this? Even though they are not doing well, can they at least come and see how their father is doing? Someone who has more than six children, begs from one place to another, lives like one who has no child. This is strange. <coughs> Please, Marco, help me. I have nothing at home. I am sorry, but I don't have anything either. You know, things are hard. Please, can you help me call my children to come and see me? They don't care for me. They don't even care if I am dead or alive. But I told you I don't know their whereabout. Oh no, how can they do this to their father? It has been over 20 years. Evil man, you are looking for someone to tie his destiny? You thought I believed you had repented after all the evil you committed. I hear. Thank God, Peter, you are here. Your uncle just left here not long ago. Which uncle, that evil uncle? Please don't call him my uncle, because I am not evil like him. But he has repented and confessed his sins. Why do you people still turn your back on him? The man is going from one place to another, begging for food. The way I see him, he might die out of abandonment and hunger. So why are you telling me that? Am I one of his children who abandoned him? If you care so much for him, why didn't you take him in and replace his children who rejected him? Took him in, for what, God forbid? So why are you acting as if you care, whereas you two are afraid to help him? See, I hate people who say something they don't do. You are afraid to help him, and here you are telling people to help him. Why not be the example? But Peter, if we outsiders are afraid of him, that is understandable, but why his children? Shouldn't they at least care for him? After all, he is their father. When you see them, tell them like that, as if you don't know none of them are useful. They haven't even taken care of themselves, let alone their evil father. Please leave me alone. Let him die. If he wants to die, he deserves it. Nonsense. This is why it is not good to live a bad life. Inasmuch as he has confessed all his atrocities and repented, everyone still sees him as evil. No one wants to associate with him, his children do not care for him, or even want to know if he is alive. This is a man who is supposed to enjoy his old age and is still walking around begging for food while people neglect him. Indeed, what a man sows, he must reap. Never live an evil life. A good person who doesn't want to show example is that good. He asks me to care for him, whereas he too is afraid to care for him. 
I should care for a man who killed my father, committed a lot of atrocities, and now claims he has repented. In fact, the fact that he is still walking around saying he has repented is annoying. If not because he is dead already, I would have strangled him by myself. Nonsense. Aww. What is it? Why are you people shouting? Your uncle's body was found near a bush, and his head is nowhere to be found. What do you mean his body is not with his head? I am surprised myself. It seems some evil people cut his head while he was walking alone at night. Finally, he met people like him. Even as he died, his corpse was still treated like an outcast. Now you understand, Romans 2 verse 11. For there is no partiality with God. Colossians 3 verse 25. For he who does wrong will receive the consequences of the wrong which he has done, and that without partiality. Deuteronomy 10 verse 17. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God who does not show partiality nor take a bribe. Now then let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Be very careful what you do, for the Lord our God will have no part in unrighteousness, partiality, or the taking of a bribe. 2 Chronicles 19, verse 7. Walking uprightly is for your own good. You are not living a righteous life for anyone. Oh, I am so ashamed of myself. Forgive me, Lord. Now I know that no one who purposely hurts his fellow under the umbrella that he or she has not repented before doing it, that will not pay for what he has done. Do you think a lot of people who died in sin did so because they loved to perish? A lot of them hearts are hardened because they have done excess, just like Pharaoh. There is this adage that says that whomever the gods want to destroy, they first of all make mad. There are some people who don't look back when doing evil and there is nothing you preach to them that will make them repent. Their eyes, hearts, and senses have been taken away spiritually, and they are very determined to continue doing evil. They are marked for destruction. Until they are destroyed, they won't stop. This is because they have shed a lot of blood, destroyed a lot of souls, and must pay for it. Romans 2, verse 9. There will be tribulation and distress for every soul of man who does evil of the Jew first and also of the Greek. There is nothing like, let me finish destroying those I want to destroy. Later I will repent. It is a lie. You will pay for it. God is not partial. Live a good life. God cannot be mocked. God is not partial. Don't think that the person you know who destroyed a lot of souls and finally repented has gone free. When you go close to the person, you will understand that God cannot be mocked as long as it is to do with sin against your fellow human. You must pay for it. The shame in restitution alone is enough punishment, and because of the shame, a lot of Christians are not doing restitution, and that is where Satan stands to torment and frustrate a lot of Christians, and many have fallen back to sin, and many are going to hell because of the shame to come out and say I am the one that killed that person or did that to that person. You can see how destructive sin against another is, even if we repent, if we don't confess and make restitution, we have not truly repented and may still lose our soul. Stay away from evil. Follow the word of God. If not for anything else, follow it because of the peace it gives. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe, like, and share. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you.